So can you tell me what, what inspired you to come out here to the more? What does this event represent for you specifically as yeah. Face Stick Man? So yeah, there's a lot of, you know, uh, you know, pissed off American. Tommy put this together. And uh, Tommy invited me when he was in the very early uh, part of planning this event. And uh, what this represents is all the, the Patriot community trying to come together. Uh, you know, a lot of these rallies are like battle cries. And, and that's a lot of what my platform is, is, is a battle cry against communism, against socialism, and against uh, cultural Marxism that's been corrupting and destroying our country. It's been burrowing its way in to the fabric of this country like a tick. And the way this, this rally is different, is as opposed to it being a battle cry, as opposed to it being hundreds of men suited up ready to fight, ready to do battle if, if they need to. Uh, this is one where it, it's family oriented. It's, the message is, is positive. We're here to relax. We're here to have a good time. We're here to to, uh, to embrace each other, show love, camaraderie. And, uh, you know, and, and it's it's one of the first times that the, the, many of the main members of the Patriot community have all come together in one spot. So, uh, as you can see, it's a very family-friendly environment. Uh, we have very little in the way of opposition. So, uh, not too many Antifa. Cops seem to be doing a pretty good job and, uh, you know, keeping the demons at bay, so to speak. So, uh, yeah. Can you talk about the idea of this is kind of a conflict between the two sides, where right now it's peaceful, but you've been in situations where it hasn't been. Um, do you think it has sort of real-world implications uh, to politics when you're kind of fighting sort of in the street? Like, do, did the Battle of Berkeley make a difference? Absolutely. Yeah, so battlefields are constantly changing, and political strategies have to change with the ever-evolving and changing battlefield. At the time, the first and second battle of Berkeley were needed. Okay, uh, conservatives, Republicans, nationalists had been beaten down uh, all throughout the, the Trump's uh, election cycle. Right? They were attacked. San Jose, Chicago. I mean, you name it. Over and over again, violently attacked uh, and assaulted. And. Uh, for me, I, I got very angry watching this because people weren't fighting back. And I'm like, we have to fight back. We have to defend ourselves. And uh, the thing is with, uh, with, with Republicans and conservatives, we're typically very peaceful, uh, non-confrontational and law-abiding. We, we don't wanna, we're not going anywhere looking for a fight. We're going to a rally because we're looking to see somebody speak and come together with, with like-minded individuals. These guys show up looking for a brawl. So when I showed up at the Battle of Berkeley, I knew exactly what was going to be waiting for me, what was going to be waiting for the people at that point. I knew that there was going to be a large contingent of Antifa uh, ready to attack us. And many of the, those attendees at that first Battle of Berkeley were unaware. A lot of more women, a lot of more elderly, they had no idea what they were getting into. That needed to happen. That first battle of Berkeley needed to happen. Face Stickman needed to happen to wake people up. And it did. It woke patriots up all over the world. I mean, the people in Venezuela are gearing up like Face Stickman. And, and I was a direct inspiration for that. I've got fans in Japan, Korea, like Eastern Europe. So it woke people up all over the world to the dangers of communism and the need to fight back against it. The second battle of Berkeley was our first really big victory, you know, uh, after, uh, you know, uh, Trump was elected. So, um, and then the, that battle, that second battle, Berkeley led to Berkeley 3.0. That was the third rally I had at Berkeley. That was with Gavin McGinnis, Lauren Southern, uh, a whole host of other people, Brittany Pettibone, myself, and it was the largest conservative rally ever held in Berkeley, California, like in decades, right? We had like almost 500 people there. There was not one instance of violence, right? Because the cops did their job, and they and Antifa decided not to show up, and the ones that did decide to show up and uh, potentially commit violence on us, they were arrested. So it goes to show you that it's not the patriots, it's not the conservatives that are bringing violence to Berkeley. The California. It's the it's Antifa. It's the left. The violence always comes from the left. It almost never comes from the right. Even in Charlottesville, had those men 
been allowed to exercise their First Amendment rights, there would have been no instance of violence. I guarantee you, I know a lot of those guys that went there, there would have been no violence. Those guys weren't coming there looking for violence. They were coming there prepared to be attacked, in which it, undoubtedly they were, and the, and the police stood down and let it happen. And so lastly, what is the future for Bay Stick Man? Well, uh, right now I've uh, I've been indicted for uh, my uh, they they charged me with uh, six felonies. I've been indicted for one. I'm on a hundred and thirty-five thousand dollar bail, and, uh, and so right now I'm fighting uh, these these felonies in court. It's uh, quite obviously political persecution. Um, so uh, you know the future right now is to continue with the movement continue moving forward right now I'm advocating peaceful nonviolent resistance I think we're in a post Charlottesville political theater and the battlefield has changed and showing up geared up ready to do battle and, and, and aggressively defending ourselves is not the right course forward at this point at this point we need to take more of a peaceful nonviolent resistance stance of that of the, the the civil rights marchers in the 1960s we need to let antifa show their ass let them attack defend yourselves but do not aggressively attack back let them show themselves for the rabid communists that they are and let them and let the trump administration pick up the ball and designate them as domestic terrorists and i'll just keep fighting i'll keep moving forward and uh you know, hopefully I'll be able to beat these charges and uh, and keep doing my thing, man. Is it a cause you'd be willing to go to prison for? I was willing to go to prison from day one. I've always been willing to do time for this. Are you kidding me? I've, 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 I've been to prison. I knew showing up at the first Battle of Berkeley that my actions, given my, my rap sheet, would, could very well lead me to go to prison. And I can tell all you people out there right now, if you're not willing to do a little bit of time, if you're not willing to shed a little bit of blood for this movement, we're not going to win. Because the left's willing to bleed. The left's willing to go to jail. They're willing to do a lot more than that. So we have to at least be willing to do that. And so just to make a clear point about unity, you're, you're saying that you juggalo <coughs> and patriot, right side by side right here. Oh, what's up, bro? So you two hey, are... Much, man. How you doing? Good, good. Because a lot of people have been branding oh. Oh, today as like you guys are going to yeah. fight or something. I, I almost want to look like your identical twin. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. My, my buddy who's also giving a speech here, Scooby 331, uh, he's got the rest of the gas masks to go to because I actually thought I might want to have a fight in Antifa. Yeah. Hey, you're, you're a yeah, I'm a juggalo, and this is going to sound weird as hell, but I kid you not. I'm an anarchist that actually voted for Trump. Actually, you're, you're like a real anarchist, not a communist, yeah. masquerading as an anarchist. You're an anarchist. You're an anarchist. I'm like, I'm more of a free market anarchist, and I'm not more of like I'd say with like, like classical anarchists, like you know, anarcho confederation stuff, you know, the more basic stuff. Decentralize the system is my main thing. Naturally, yes, I'd like it to be we can survive without the government, but if that's to be the face of Antifa running that crap, we can't have that. Plain and simple. You know, so then you know, may as well just like say, all right, let's just decentralize the system, keep what we need, which is the Constitution Bill of Rights, because there's nothing wrong with it. It works, we need it. Why destroy something that protects you? 